welcome back to Sweet Stories in the Dell. I'm Caperton Morton. I'm a Sweet Bar alum and produce this podcast in collaboration with the college. This is part one of the two-part episode four, Sweet Bar's 21st Century Equestrian Program and its historic roots. Sweet Bar's 100-year-old equestrian program has a solid foundation built on generations of unique equine expertise, solidified by a passion for horses. Since 1907, Sweet Bar's Athletic Association has promoted team sports, and in 1920, the equestrian program and the hunt team were established. Today, Sweet Bar has one equestrian team with two rosters, one for the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association, or the IHSA, and one for the National Collegiate Equestrian Association, or the NCEA. EquestrianCoach.com provides a helpful description of what differentiates the NCEA and the IHSA. One difference is, and I quote, the NCEA competes in a head-to-head competition against one school, while the IHSA competes against the entire region at every show, unquote. Including both associations at Sweetwire opens up the world of competitive riding to the full spectrum of riding skills, from the beginning rider to the accomplished. The NCEA was founded in 1998 and adheres to Title IX rules and regulations. This gives female equestrian students the opportunity to compete at the highest levels of this sport. There are 24 NCEA teams, and Sweet Bar is in Division III, but we compete with the huge Division I and II schools as well. In the fall of 2019, Sweet Bar was in the NCEA's top 10 in fences, and in February of 2020, the IHSA riders won the regional championship for a third consecutive season. Beyond the successes of the equestrian team are the positive influences that Sweet Bar's equestrian program has had and continues to have on our students. Both our competitive and recreational equestrians learn much about teamwork and leadership by riding and working with horses. And what's really special is how they apply this unique understanding within their own academic arenas. More about this later. I'm Mimi Roten, the director of the equestrian program at Sweetbriar College. Mimi Roten has a special connection with Sweetbar's historic equestrian program that comes from being a Sweetbar graduate, class of 1993. As a student, she rode for the equestrian team and was on the riding council. And as the program director, Mimi has been voted in four times as the Old Dominion Athletic Conference Coach of the Year, including 2019. We're fortunate to have Mimi passing along her unique expertise to our 21st century writing students. And actually, we have Mimi's mother to thank. When Mimi was in high school, she and her mom were driving through Virginia touring colleges when they came up on Sweetbriar, which was not on Mimi's list. And my mother said, wait a minute, I think that's in your book of colleges that have equestrian programs. So... We drove in, and the rest is kind of history. You know, driving into campus is just glorious and beautiful, and that caught my eye. And then, of course, we drove past the stables, and that then, you know, made me drool. So it was a a little luck, but um, once I had been here, it was obvious that was where I should be. Mimi says her psychology major classes helped her better understand the nature of horses. And understanding horses is a huge part of the equestrian program at Sweetbriar. Dr. Johnson was the head of the psychology department, and he was very much into animal behavior. And so I was really lucky to get to take um, a couple classes with him. And that just sort of um, piqued my interest. I always, you know, felt like, People oftentimes needed horses at different times in their life, and I had seen that 
for the unwilling kind of love and attention that horses kind of give people. And then to be able to study with him and understand a little bit more, you know, um, just animal behavior in general was very, very helpful. And I am grateful for that every single day. I'm Katie Balding. I am a senior at Sweetbriar, graduate this coming spring. I'm a business major and economics minor. Katie had known about Sweetbriar from a very young age. Her aunt Katrina Balding Bills, class of 1997, rode on the equestrian team and was head of the riding council, just like Katie is this year. But aunt Katrina encouraged Katie to look around at other colleges too. Really, it was kind of like through the horse shows. I did IEA, which is the Interscholastic Equestrian Association. The IEA was established in 2002 to give young riders in grades 4 through 12 a chance to become equestrian competitors without owning their own horses. At nationals, each year they have college tables, and that is where I filled out my first recruitment form. I was probably in like seventh grade. Back in March of 2020, concerns about the coronavirus prompted Sweetbriar to transition to remote learning. Before reopening for the 2020 fall semester, strict COVID protocols for conduct were instituted college-wide, so it wasn't a surprise to learn that the 2020 fall season had been canceled. It has been an interesting ride. Um, So we didn't have NCA nationals. We didn't have IHSA nationals. I am sure that if our seasons hadn't gotten cut short, we would both have been going to nationals. So we also couldn't have um, the ODAC championships. It's our local, the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. And each spring we had the ODAC equestrian championships, which was really sad because we were going to host it. (laughs) But the equestrian team hasn't been sitting around. They've been scrimmaging within their own rosters. Katie says that in 2018, her freshman year, Sweetbriar joined the National Collegiate Equestrian Association. That year, students could be on both the NCEA and the IHSA rosters, and she was on both. But by the next year, the rules had changed, and students could only be on one roster. So Katie chose the NCEA. I tell Katie what President Wu said about how the equestrian program helps students learn lessons of perseverance, discipline, and teamwork, and ask how this reflects in her experiences. Oh, there are a ton. And the most prominent is that my professors trust me and say, you know, I love having equestrians in my classes because I know that they are going to have time management skills they're going to be disciplined, and they're going to come at things with passion for success. Now's a good time to note how the equestrian program overlaps into Sweetbar's courses of study for students planning an equine career. So we have the equine studies training certificate, and then we have the equine studies management certificate. They both require some psychology, some education, and they require financial classes and business classes. I am doing the equine studies training certificate. I mean, for me, the whole reason I am a business major and econ minor is because I do want to become a professional in the horse industry and I want to have my own farm and my own business. Sweet Rider has been fantastic in their business program for me. My advisor is Tom Rogers, and he is a small business owner. And that makes a world of difference because it's the difference between theory and practice. And we learn through his experiences, we learn so much about ethical practices and the way that you should do things, holding yourself to a higher standard and being able to motivate your employees and yourself to do better and to help others do better. The professors, 
they they want you to succeed. There's this deeper level of it. You know, they want you to be a successful student, but they also want you to be a successful human being. I'm curious about how the writing program helped mold Mimi into the person she is today. So I asked her about that. So when I was here as a student, I was lucky enough to be able to ride on some teams, learn about field riding that I really hadn't done before, and have instruction through um, Paul Cronin and Jill Randalls. And they really, really helped develop me a lot in terms of um, working with horses and working to help people learn about riding and learn to ride better. Mimi graduated and left to teach and ride professionally in New Jersey. Once coming back, I was really lucky again to get to still um, work with Paul Cronin, which uh, was just amazing. He pushed me to continue as a professional, developing myself, and then um, being able to share that with other people. I also got to work under Shelby French as the director of riding, and that was another great experience. Again, um, getting her perspective on things, and she, you know, taught the same system that we all did, but came from a very different background. So, but it was really a good experience to have all of that um, to make me very diverse in my experiences. In 1967, a 28-year-old Paul Cronin was hired by the college as the director of the riding program. And he taught our equestrians for 34 years until retiring in 2001. My name is Paul Cronin. I'm the former director of riding at Sweetbriar College. Mimi was very competent on her own, and she comes from a very strong background. She came in as a student with a gray horse named Brian. How would I remember that? <laughs> Mimi was very good, and she came in as a, one of the stronger competitive riders. And she caught on to how things work with the Riding Council, and she participated in student leadership. Paul Cronin is undoubtedly a profound link to the roots of Sweetbriar's historic equestrian program. And that makes him the perfect person to unfold its history. Harriet Howell Rogers was the head of the Riding Program and very active in the Physical Education Department, and the Riding sprung out of that. Harriet Rogers was the first director of riding at Sweetbriar. She graduated from Mount Holyoke College in 1924 and shortly after arrived at Sweetbriar as the professor of physical education. In fact, in the 1972 Winter Alumni magazine, it's noted that Harriet encouraged the students to do fundraising projects to help fund the building of a gym. And in 1931, the Daisy Williams Gymnasium was opened. Her encouragement also spurred on the building of the outing cabin and the boathouse. And she stayed active until 1967. But she started the Division of Girls and Women in Sports. That developed the Affiliated National Riding Committee, which still goes today. And that's a very tough competition. She had retired when I came, but we caught up to each other, and she was extremely helpful to me as I was learning the job. I heard about Sweetbriar showing in horse shows around Boston and Connecticut because we would see Sweetbriar College students in the better quality classes. And you'd ask, where are they from? Oh, they're from Sweetbriar. Because they sat what is the standard equitation position today of depth in the heel and three angles of the heel, knee, and the hip, and their following arm over the jumps. Modern forward riding. They were very modern. Harriet Rogers put Sweetbriar on the map. There's no question. And she was the pillar of the quality of the Sweetbriar riding. Due to her academic approach to riding and in the Division of Girls and Women in Sport, they latched on to Captain Littower and his book, Common Sense Horsemanship and the Modern Forward Riding System. Captain Vladimir S. Littower came to the U.S. in 1921 after serving in the Russian Imperial Cavalry. His war experiences on horseback led him to discourage the dressage method for cross-country riding. He felt dressage was much better suited to parades than for maneuvers in the countryside. Instead, he promoted the forward riding system, or what is also called hunt seat. In the same 1972 alumni magazine, Harriet wrote an article where she mentioned Captain Latower. 
that he, quote, became the outstanding proponent of forward writing in this country, end quote, and that he had been a great friend and counselor to Sweetbriar. So Harriet Rogers and Captain Latower were both incredible influences on the evolution of Sweetbriar's equestrian program, and Paul Cronin is our link to them both. What an honor for Harriet Hal Rogers to have the, the new writing center named in her honor. Yes, and, but she really deserved it. She was there to 1967 and, and kept the quality of writing going, even as times changed. And she would have Captain Tower come for one and two week clinics. So the students had the opportunity to ride on the Latour, and he also taught the faculty while he was there. And on his visits, he spent some time with Mrs. Pinnell. And Gary Pinnell was Sweet Bar College's fifth president. So she said, we're going to build a new facility. We have an anonymous donor with a shoulder behind us. Help us find a director of riding. And he recommended me. Which was fine. I was just finished graduate school. Before that, I had four years in the officer candidate school, and I was showing horses for General Mellon while I was at the University of Pittsburgh. And Captain Latour encouraged me to go, and I got lured away. <laughs> when I interviewed, I never bothered looking at the old facilities. I probably would have run away. I'm not kidding. But when I got there, I went, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Even though the facilities weren't that good, there was a tremendous, enthusiastic group of students. They were interested in showing, and a few got to show because of the limited horses. And so it was time to close down or change. We must say thank you to the anonymous donor and Mrs. Pinnell. They were trying to decide what to do with the program. Mrs. Pinnell and the anonymous donor planned on building a new riding facility, which would have a large enough ring for uh, horse shows at home where we could have two classes at one time, or we could have outsiders come and show at Sweetbriar. And the old facility did not have a ring large enough for a course. Competitive scene changed in the hunters and jumpers. It was outdated. So the new facility really helped set up the foundation for the riding program. I had the job of planning it. <laughs> from scratch. <laughs> but Mrs. Pinnell guided me. I went out to Notre Dame, where they had a new riding center. And then I went to Fosco School. Ours ended up being much bigger than both of them. But I went to different riding programs in colleges, but mainly commercial, and saw their design, asked them what was working and not working. It was laid out so we could have private horses and stronger horses on one side that might not be always safe to walk by, a little more breedy, and then school horses on the other side. And of course, terrific stalls now being renovated. <laughs> After the facility was built, some of the older faculty would say, oh, get out of the way. Here comes our football coach, <laughs> understandably. And um, at any rate, I got teased a lot. In January of 2020, Richard C. Colton Jr. made a donation to Sweetbriar to support the renovation of the stables at the Harriet Howell Rogers Writing Center. This gift was made in memory of his mother, Howell Likes Colton, class of 1938. As a student, Howell was a French major and was the head of the writing council. The Harriet Howell Rogers Writing Center was dedicated in 1971, so Mr. Colton's gift has been instrumental for updating the stable's infrastructure as well as the visible renovations. Now they'll be known as the Howell Likes Colton Stables. And just to let you know, there's no known family ties with the Howell name in common. I ask Mimi exactly how Mr. Colton's gift is being put to use. Gosh, we are so lucky and grateful for it. So the facility being built in 1970 has not really seen any major renovations. You know, the barn was built really well and with a lot of forethought in it. It was absolutely in line with everything and the quality. And despite all of the, you know, 
power washing and wiping down and things like that, there is a point where things have to be freshened up. And so it is definitely going to make the right presentation and first impression that we hope and expect for Sweetbriar. The quality of the things that were there in the past has uh, been, you know, put back into it in the same way. They have updated the water lines and the electric and the stalls all have now sliding doors on them, which is probably the biggest visual difference. And that'll make a huge difference in terms of the safety and just kind of making sure that the horses have a nice clear path. In terms of being environmentally friendly, we have LED lights that run through the center of the aisle and then each one for the individual stalls. And those are going to make a huge impact in our electric bill. (laughs) We were lucky enough to be able to do that um, through Friends of Riding Gifts earlier in the year for our indoor arena and have already heard that they have made a huge impact and it's you know more efficient you can't but win for that for the barn though you know it has much better ventilation each horse has an individual fan and so lots of improvements to make things safer and better for the humans and the horses I ask if the renovations are almost finished. Almost finished, not finished yet. Um, But as they did them, there were things that sort of got added to the list. They've started to do some work in the Bailey room and in the offices, which was um, a separate gift and very, very helpful. But that'll be nice to kind of have um, the whole project completed. So it's close, but it's not fast enough, you know. (laughs) I arrive at the writing center early on a beautiful October morning. I'm here to get a look at the renovations myself and to gather ambient audio. With my mask on, I enter the right wing of the facility. This side is for the horses owned by the college. Looking up and down the stable aisle, my mind is blown back to the mid-80s when I took writing in PE. I'll always remember the day I was paired with Molson, a great big horse. That was the day I gave Jill Randalls, my class's riding instructor, her first batch of gray hair. Anyway, everything looks familiar, but with the renovation, it all looks more crisp. Hi. What's going on? I'm alone, except for some horses already hanging out in their stalls. They're munching on hay, waiting for the main breakfast course to arrive, though some are waiting more patiently than others. I hear the sound of hooves entering the wing and turn to see someone leading two horses in through the wide open doorway facing the paddocks. Later, when she's sweeping, I find out that this is student Ella Lichty. She's a psychology major and an environmental studies minor, rides for the IHSA, and works in the stables too. Can you sweep back to shaving? Just so when the horses come in and out, they pull less out into the aisle and it keeps it cleaner. But the horses, you have to make sure the horses don't come out while you're sweeping because horses like him are so curious and he's wanting to like push past you and see everything the whole time. Ella's referring to Fresco. He's a handsome dark bay with tall white socks and a thin white blaze. And I love the working part of it because you get to know all the horses differently than you do with the riding. And it's also just a nice way to start the morning. It's not like schoolwork where you're like really focusing on it. It's just like sweeping and walking horses in and out. Very relaxing to me at least. Sarah, one of the riding center employees, pours large cups of what looks like green gruel in the horses' food buckets, and they seem to love it. Mimi's right. The stall doors moving on tracks does seem more safe than the older doors on hinges. Out in the main arena, a class is in session with three mounted students and their teacher, who's on his feet. Someone's riding in the outdoor ring. Once outside, I hear Mimi and then see her standing in the ring. She's instructing a student on horseback.
Heading back to the stalls, I stopped to peek in the gallery windows to the Bailey Room, named for Clayton E. Bailey, the writing director prior to Paul Cronin. I'm curious to see the renovations that Mimi spoke about. I'll give you a quick tour, but we'll swing around to the front to the main entrance between the two stable wings. When entering the Bailey Room, which is quite spacious, the focal point is the wall of windows that face the indoor arena. And surrounding these windows is wood paneling made from the wood salvaged from the stable's renovation. To the left is a seating area with several big comfy brown leather chairs and a coffee table atop a large area rug. Beyond the chairs is a glass door that leads to the writing center office, which has also been renovated. On the right are two beautiful wooden conference tables set end to end that have an extra special provenance. They were handmade locally using wooden planks salvaged from the college's very first writing center. This area will serve many functions, but the most notable is classroom. The door beyond the tables on the far right wall leads to the team room with several wooden lockers and benches. There's also a door leading to the renovated bathroom that has another door leading to the walkway by the arena. Walking back down the stable swing, I notice that it's actually spotless. Sarah has been vacuuming the aisle while student Abby Bell, carrying a small tank, sprays down the hardware on the stall doors. Everything that gets touched a lot, she says, gets disinfected. On the way back to my car, I spy Briar, the barn cat. Be sure to come back for part two of Sweetbar's 21st century equestrian program and its historic roots. We learn about the impact joining the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association had on the college's equestrian program. Also, Sweetbar president Meredith Wu explains why it was important to her to take riding lessons. And Katie Balding talks about the positive lessons learned from playing games with horses. Plus, I take you to the 2020 Hunter Trials. Come on back. Take care.